on a cutter scrape and uh, you start bleeding or you just freak out because like, oh, what do I do, what do I do? I'm sure we've all been there. And um, all throughout life, we go through experiences that leave us with these kind of injuries. And whether it be cooking in the kitchen, riding a bicycle, or even just walking down the street, accidents can happen. And as a wild child, I've gotten a lot of cuts and scrapes and I've experienced the good and bad to take care of all these injuries. And I've learned that through these experiences, there's a proper way to take care of cuts and scrapes. And um, in order to properly take care of them, it takes an easy three-step process. It's prep, cleaning, and dressing. And let's go to the first step of the process. The first step of the process is to take the necessary precautions in order to prevent uh, the injury from being contaminated by outside germs or bacteria that can cause infection. And there's a, a couple universal precautions that professionals like to use in order to prevent these kind of things from happening. The first off is to use um, protective gear. The first thing you can do is um, you either, in, my, in most minor cases, all you really need would be some hand sanitizer or vinyl latex gloves or even like a face mask. And what this does is it prevents uh, the exchange of bodily fluids, which can spread germs and bacteria. And then another, actually the most important thing to do before is to um, clean your hands, wash your hands before and after dealing with any kind of open wound because, like I said, um, that can cause the spread of germs or bacteria and cause infection. After you've done the right, or after you've taken the necessary precautions, you can easily move on to handling the wound itself. And um, the next step of the process is to clean the wound. In any situation, most of the time, cuts and scrapes will there will be uh, bleeding. It just occurs naturally, and it's not something you have to worry about too much. It's just before you start doing any cleaning, you have to stop the bleeding. To do that, um, all you have to do is uh, apply direct pressure to the wound. So if this was a, a bleeding wound, you could get some gauze. You have some kind of absorbent material, a napkin, um, a paper towel, or you know a piece of clothing if you don't have anything like that, and just apply direct pressure. That will, that will help slow the flow of bleeding It'll help your blood clot and eventually it will stop bleeding altogether. Another thing you can do is to raise the injury above the heart. What this does is uh, it uses gravity to slow the flow of blood away from the injury site. So if you have your leg, you lift it above your heart. If you don't, just do this. And yeah, slowing the flow of blood or blood will help to clot the blood as well. And then, oh, the last part of slowing the flow of blood is to use pressure points. Pressure points are arteries that are near the surface of the skin. Um, and you can, kind of, you can use them to restrict blood flow, kind of like uh, stepping on your garden hose. You notice the deep decrease in flow of water. And there are three main points. The first point is on your inner arm between your elbow and your shoulder, right here. Another point would be in between your groin and your knee, on your inner thigh, right here. And the last point would be behind the knee. And after you stop the bleeding, you can finally move on to actual, actually cleaning the wound. And it's a pretty easy process. It's the, most, uh, it's the more simple process out of the cleaning or the prepping or anything like that. Um, all you have to do is simply take off the, the paper or whatever you're using, um, rinse your injury under soap or under running water. You can use soap if you want, you don't have to. So you just rinse real quick. Make sure to blot it dry. That way you don't deal with the wet injury. After this, um, oh, actually in some cases people like to use hydrogen peroxide. Maybe you fall in the dirt, you get a cut from something like that and you want to use this to clean all of your, uh, or to, to kill any bacteria or germs that may be left in the injury. Um, but once you've done, uh, once, oops, once you've finished cleaning your wound, the next thing to do simply is to apply a bandage. Uh, the third step of this process, the bandaging or the dressing, uh, it helps to prevent, or it helps the process of healing for your injuries. And um, what this can do is to actually, um, Oh, what this can do to uh, help you is it'll isolate the injury from any further contaminants, uh, same uh, concept as before, so you don't have any germs or new bacteria being introduced to the wound site. Uh, it also helps with cuts to have a bandage so that you don't have uh, the, the wound to reopen. And then the third is that if you, in the case that you want to use an antibiotic ointment, um, it'll prevent that from rubbing onto your clothing. And so all you really have to do, this could even be easier than cleaning, essentially you just find the right size band-aid, Put it on the wound, and there you go. But in cases where, like this one, it's a really large wound, you could go and grab um, gauze or another sanitary piece of cloth, put it on the wound again, and then secure it with some medical tape, because medical tape is actually designed to stick to your skin. And so once you've done this, you've pretty much completed your job. And so let's review real quick. 
the first thing to do is to make sure that you prep yourself by keeping yourself clean or cleaning yourself afterwards. Then you clean the wound, you stop the bleeding, you rinse everything off, and last, you just um, apply a bandage. And if you use this easy three-step process, you can, avoid, you can avoid any uh, further contaminants or complications of injury. And, I mean, things happen every day, you know, accidents can happen with all the crazy things going on, like, you never know what might happen, you never know if you need first aid. And so, next time you find yourself in this kind of situation where it's like, oh no, am I ready to do this? Can I hurt or can I heal myself? You can say, yeah, I'm totally ready. But in the cases where it's like a, a major injury, just call that one instead. Yeah. <laughs>